Happy Saturday. <laughs> it is Saturday, November 5th, and I'm getting ready to do my first live stream for my members this afternoon in about 17 minutes. And um, I'm excited. I don't really have an agenda for today, but we're just going to meet each other and this month we're talking a little bit about shadow work and journaling and uh, that kind of stuff. Gratitude, journaling, shadow work. Those are the main themes of November. So if you have not signed up for my membership yet, it's simple. If you want to join, go to my channel on YouTube and just to the left of the subscribe button is a join button. Hit that and to get the live streams, you either need to pick tier two, which gets one live stream a month, or tier three, which gets two live streams a month. So I had so much vlog footage filmed and I realized that I've never filmed any kind of an intro or anything to it. So thank you for hanging out with me and I'm going to share a lot of vlog footage that I have for various fall recipes that I've made. Apple butter, I made potato soup, and I made chicken noodle soup from scratch of course, and just various things. And thank you to Wild Grains for sponsoring this video because they are amazing, you guys. They sent me this gorgeous box full of all kinds of goodness, sourdough breads and rosemary sourdough breads and cranberry bread and croissants and pastas and cinnamon rolls, pumpkin cinnamon rolls. They were so delicious. So for the first 50 people that would like to sign up for these boxes, they're going to give you $10 off per box and free croissants in every box that you ever order again. So um, I'm going to put that link down below if you'd like to check them out because they're delicious and they're amazing. So look at these. I'm going to show you. Hang on, let's go on a journey together. <laughs> so my freezer is overflowing with goodness. Like, look at this. This is the cranberry pecan bread. I'm going to make that and put some apple butter on it or maybe have it at Thanksgiving. And fettuccine, tonarelli. croissants and I already made um, I already made a couple of the loaves of bread uh oh made a, okay I already made the uh, two loaves of sourdough and I've made the cinnamon rolls they're all so good and so take advantage of this if you are a person who likes breads or likes those kind of savory things to add to your meal, go subscribe. I finally got around to peeling all of those apples I bought at the farm stand. And I used this apple peeler that I got on Amazon and it's awesome. It doesn't 100% get all of the peel as you can see, but it gets enough of it off to leave them really manageable. So I totally recommend it and we'll link below. Then I just went through and peeled the rest of them and I used this melon baller to scoop the cores out of the middle. And then I just chopped them into um, manageable sized pieces and put them in a big pot with all of the rest of the ingredients. And cooked them for probably, I don't know, uh, that maybe 20 minutes, I would say closer to a half an hour. You just want them soft enough to stick into a food processor so that you can pour them into a cake pan. And then you bake them for probably um, three to four hours. You just want it dark brown. And when you stick a spoon in there and turn the spoon upside down, it's kind of the consistency of pudding. It's thicker. And there you go. Yummy apple butter.
here it is in all of its glory. <laughs> what a mess. It smells like dog. It smells like animals. I think it's from when my daughters lived here. So I'm gonna have to scrub the carpets, paint, all that good stuff. Here we go. Good morning. It is Monday. I went to the dentist for a cleaning this morning and then I came home, sat around and meditated for a little while, got in my feels a little bit. Tomorrow will be one week since my brother died and um, I'm still processing how I feel about that and why I'm feeling certain things and I don't know, it's just, it's a lot. I've been kind of quiet about it, I don't really have words, or I don't really know how to articulate. I'm just processing. Anyways, I, the other day I cleaned the carpets in this office down here, this bedroom down here. I, I emptied everything out of it. This whole room is full of stuff from that room. And I scrubbed the carpets. You're on the trampoline, so you're a little shaky. <laughs> um, I scrubbed the carpets to get that clean. It still smelled like animal. I think it was from my when my one, one or both of my daughters lived in there. And each one of them had pets in there. And um, yeah, just dank like old animal. <laughs> so anyways, I scrubbed the carpets and yesterday I went through and the people that owned this house before, I mean they, in theory, I see that they tried to do some good work to this house, but they, their finishes were like they put new baseboards on. They hu used these huge nails to nail them in and they didn't like set the nails so they're still like even with the surface and you could see them and half of them are getting rusty. They never like spackled over the nails. Spackle is not the right word, but you know what I'm saying. They never like caulked or spackled over the nails and then painted or anything. They have like big gaps between the baseboard and the wall in some areas because the wall's kind of wonky and they never like filled it and caulked the baseboard. I don't know, it just didn't look right. So I, caulked. Let's go look. And like out here, they've never painted the trim and like it's still like covered in paint in places and whatnot. So in here in the bathroom, you can see what I'm talking about. Let's look. Look down here at the baseboards. Can you see how there's like rusty nails and they didn't caulk on the top? That's what I'm talking about. So anyways, I, in here, I, I put backer rod in there to fill up a lot of the gaps and then yesterday I caulked. But you can see how these wooden baseboards are just covered in paint. But I caulked them, caulked along the thing and in the corner there, there was a huge gap. So now I have to, if I don't paint the bottom part, I'm at least gonna have to paint that black or something so it doesn't stand out as bad. But I, I filled all the nail holes, so I need to sand that down. And then I have planned on painting the baseboards. I gotta figure out something to do with this corner because they have paint all over the, paneling there, the beadboard. I don't know if I can razor that off or sand it off. I don't want to ruin it, but I also don't want to have to paint the whole room just because of that. Then I need to um, take the, ooh, that's bright. Anyways, you can't see, but there's curtains up there. I need to take the curtains down, paint the room. Um, so what I was saying is I was thinking about, the plan was to paint the baseboards, paint the ceiling, and then paint the walls. The problem is that I'm now lazy. 
<laughs> and I don't know that I want to do all that work today. So I'm like, well, the baseboards aren't that bad, are they? And like back on that side, like that's all going to be behind the camera because I'm going to make this into my studio. That's all going to be behind the camera. Nobody's ever going to see that. I don't have to address that beadboard right now. Anyways, that's the problem is that now I'm like lazy. So I'm not sure what we're going to end up doing. <laughs> but um, eventually we'll get the baseboards painted. But I'm thinking, where can I put you? So I'm thinking like the cameras and stuff will go here and film this way. And then on that back wall, I'm going to, I don't know, do some kind of decor. But then I'm also thinking on this wall, because you know, the to film, it's only going to take up a little bit over here, right? And so I'm thinking that this wall, I can do something different so that, because um, I really wanted to start doing more like Reiki videos, Reiki ASMR and things like that. And I'm thinking that I can do something here with that, like hang some twinkle lights and like have a different background that's a little bit more conducive to that instead of just videos. So anyways, it'll be nice to have a creative space dedicated to just this. And so anyways, I think I just need to start by getting the paint on the wall. And you know, the horrible thing is that I'm looking at it now going, I don't know that I feel like doing that at all. Maybe I'll do it next weekend. <laughs> I am the worst at procrastinating. But you know what, I've done so much. You know what, I just need to give myself more credit. I've done a lot. We're shutting that door. And we're shutting the door and we're walking the other way. <laughs> See that work that needs done and we're walking the other way. So this is the part of my DIY projects where I usually stop vlogging and choose not to film <laughs> because I'm getting so irritated. I am draping and taping and prepping till I am numb in the fingers. And if you know anything about me, you know that I hate, I hate taping to paint, taping off a room so that I could paint. I would rather clean a thousand bathrooms than tape a room. <laughs> now, when Fred and I used to be together as a couple, it worked out well because he actually enjoyed paint, or no. He hates painting, but he actually enjoyed taping. He finds it kind of meditative. And I'm just like, well, go on with your bad tape and self then because I hate it. So you do the taping, I'll do the painting. Yeah. Now that we're not together anymore, <laughs> I can't just go, hey, want to tape a room for me? He's like, no. So, um, yeah. I no longer get that boyfriend privilege now that we're just friends. That sucks. So here I am taping. I'd say I'm about two thirds done, maybe a little more, but I'm just like already just like, <laughs> I'm wanting to cuss and like be done and just be like, forget it. I know it's not that big of a deal, but like, it, do you ever have those things? Do you ever have those things that just grate your effing nerves? You hate it so bad. You would rather get a tooth pulled. <laughs> this is that for me. I'm so dramatic. I'm not dramatic at all. I'm like that TikTok sound, you know, like, Am I the drama? I don't think I'm the drama. Maybe I'm the drama. <laughs> Anyways, all right, back to work. You know, the worst part about the taping is that I already did it once because I had to tape everything off to do the baseboards. And now I have to retape everything to spray the rest of the walls. And because I'm using a sprayer, I have to like really dape, drape and tape because you know, the sprayer will get on everything. So. Yeah, it's, I've had to do it like twice extra.
So the color I'm painting is called Red End Point by, I think it's the Sherwin-Williams 2023 color of the year. Not because this is sponsored or anything like that, because it is not, but because I am a taupey mauve bitch and I show me a good mauve taupe and I'm like, yes, that. So this is one of those colors people will either love or hate. I don't care, I love it. <laughs> so I primed my paint sprayer and now I'm going to jump in the paint. Trying really hard not to make a huge mess because I know myself and that is what we do. Oh God. I don't think it's gonna take the whole gallon, but we're gonna see. So after all of that, I can't use the sprayer because I cannot get the tip unclogged. You know, you think you clean these things well, and apparently you don't, because it will not work. <laughs> so now I'm losing sunlight, so irritated, and I can't help but think that I brought it all on myself because I've been putting out this horrible energy of, I hate this taping, this sucks, this is awful. So the universe is like, you want sucks awful? Okay, got it. <laughs> Here's some more. So now I'm just trying to get it done. chicken noodle soup yesterday because my granddaughters came over to go trick-or-treating and I was gonna have a nice warm bowl of soup waiting for them when they got back and it didn't happen I was so tired because I've been working on my new filming space downstairs my new studio let me show you real quick now my downstairs is toe up from the flow up so don't judge it like yeah we're a mess but that's because everything got torn out of here and I've been working in here. I still have work to do, but I still have work to do, but this is where we are so far. So anyways, all of the painting and all of that, I got so tired and I was like, sorry guys, I don't have dinner for you. Maddie's like, you do not have to feed us, mom. And I'm like, tell a mom not to feed her babies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyways, today, now I have to make chicken soup because I don't want the chicken to go bad because I make everything from scratch. So I'm gonna put the chicken on to boil for a while, a couple of hours to get all the good broth going. And we'll go from there. P.S. That means that if you are a vegan, this isn't for you because I'm cooking chicken. <laughs> you guys, do please don't uh, judge my mess because like I said, I've been busy and this is what happens. This is real life. <laughs> when you've been busy, your house takes a hit, but that's okay. Because you know what can happen when your house gets dirty? It can get cleaned again. And it's really not a big deal, right? <laughs> don't want anything chicken related getting on me so I don't feel like putting on an apron I'm just gonna tuck this in here so now I'm just rinsing off the chicken in and out Ugh. I hate this part so much I just chicken germs oh They're like little neon bombs of disease and infection. All right, so I've given my girl a good scrub and I'm putting her in the pot. Lord, thank you so much. Lord, thank you for all of the blessings 
and the nourishment that is going to come from this food. I ask that you please bless this food with love and light. Please transmute any low vibrating energy associated with this food and transform it into good nutritional high vibe energy for my body and all that those and all those that eat it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Now I am going to scrub everything. Now I am just going to fill the pan with water. I'm probably going to fill it up to here because I'm going to let it cook for a few hours and it'll boil down. Now I do most of my seasoning after this part's done and when I'm making the actual soup. But you can do whatever you want. So right now at this stage I really just usually put... Um, I usually just put like a bunch of salt. And of course, I spilled it everywhere. Oh well, that's the joy of cooking. We'll clean that up later. I put a couple of tablespoons of salt and I think I'm gonna put a bay leaf. I'm with my chicken soup. With my chicken soup, I'm pretty traditional. I don't like a lot of fancy spices. I don't even always put a bay leaf in there. I just think it sounds good. I also think some rosemary sounds good, so I think I might add a little bit of that. But, um, you know what? If you just made this with like salt and pepper, it's still amazing. I don't care. Laugh at me for being a white person with no spices all you want. It's tasty. <laughs> but um, sometimes I do add more. If I have tarragon, I might add that. If I have rosemary or a bay leaf, like I said, I, I sometimes add that. But this part, you're really just wanting to cook down the chicken. You're cooking the chicken, and you're getting all of that good bone broth and stuff like that in it, too. So, really, this is just about making the broth. Then you come back, and while you're deboning the chicken, you're cooking the vegetables and um, adding all the flavorings in then. So, right now... I just turn this on like medium to medium high and I'm just gonna let this cook for like a couple of hours. I'm going to strain the broth because it gets all kinds of scuzziness and stuff in it. And I like to drain that out. So I have no idea if there are easier ways to do this in life, but the way I have always done it that I found works best for me is I take coffee filters or paper towels or something. I put a pot or an, a big bowl strainer and then I line it with coffee filters. <clears throat> I find that paper towels work but they're a little too thick. If you use thin ones, they kind of shred, and if you use the thicker ones, they're kind of a little too thick, and it's hard for the liquid to strain through. So if you have access to coffee filters, that is what I suggest you use. And it's tricky to get them to stay in place at first, but once they're wet, they stay where they're supposed to be. We'll start there and I have a huge pot and I don't know that that pot down there is going to be big enough to catch all of this but we're gonna start there anyways we can always get another bowl if you can see like it's all kinds of don't mind my camera if you can see there's all kinds of good broth down in there but there's all of that stuff on the surface that's what we're gonna get rid of Pour it slowly until your coffee filters are set in place. I also want to pay attention to how much uh, room, how much space I have in this pot down there. 
Oh yeah, we got plenty of room. As the filters get clogged up with fat and gristle, it goes slower, so I'm just trying to be patient with it. The broth is so healthy, I want to save as much of it as I can. That's a broth. Now, because I tend to be messy, <laughs> I'm clumsy and messy, and I know that about myself. I'm not just going to dump this because I will end up making a mess everywhere, and I will end up losing half of the broth. So I'm just gonna take a big measuring cup and put it back in the original pot. But you can do it however you feel most comfortable doing it. Now once I get this down a little bit, I'll be okay. All right, maybe that's enough. Oh, she heavy. Oh, God. Okay, so I need to wash my carrots and my celery. Um, I usually only put a couple of stalks of celery in, like two or maybe three. Because I think if not, it just gives, it makes the flavor too overpowering for me. wash these. I also turned on the oven to preheat so that I can bake some bread. suggest tasting your broth as well see where you're starting every chicken is gonna some chickens are gonna be more flavorful than others oh yeah that's not much at all you um, depending on how long you cooked it you may need to add I'm gonna add a lot of salt start there because that really needs it. And then I am going to, when it's really not very flavorful like this, I add a little bit of bouillon. 
I prefer to use uh, Better Than Bullion. That's my preference. It's a paste and you pull out just a little bit of it. A teaspoon of this is equivalent to a bullion cube. So I pulled out probably a couple teaspoons. And we're gonna start there. While the veggies are cooking, I'm gonna debone the chicken and you want to let this sit out and cool for a while because it's going to be scalding, if not. And I have my trash bag right here because you wanna be able to get rid of all the nasty stuff. There's no pretty way to do it. Just start grabbing and pulling. You wanna be very careful to watch for bones and anytime you're eating uh, soup like this or anything made with like chicken like this you really want to be careful for bones because it can be really easy to choke okay so this has salt quite a bit of salt some rosemary bay leaf salt pepper some onion powder I just added more bullion because this really needed some flavor. So, and Fred showed up bearing ribs. He barbecued ribs today. So I was like, why you cooked when you knew I was cooking? I will never know, but I'm glad he brought them because they look amazing. So I'm just gonna let this uh, cook until the veggies are soft and then I'm gonna add egg noodles. So today we're going to be making sourdough rosemary garlic bread. So good. So I'm going to throw that in the oven and we're going to see how that turns out. And for the first 50 of you guys that purchase a box, you're going to get $10 off plus free croissant. I can't say that word. <laughs> you're going to get $10 off plus free croissants in every box that you ever get. So if you're interested, I'm gonna stick all of the details down below. So I just added the egg noodles. Um, the vegetables aren't quite done yet, but I thought it was safe to go ahead and add these. And as you can see, I still have a horrible habit of cooking like I have four kids at home, <laughs> not just myself. So this is going to make a lot of leftovers and I'll probably give a lot of it away. So now as soon as the vegetables are soft and the noodles are soft and the seasonings are right, we're good to go.